This lesson is going to be on rational numbers, fractions and decimals. We're going to learn how to convert fractions into decimals and vice versa. The vocabulary that you need to know. A rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction, a simple fraction, or you can call it a ratio. The denominator here, though, can never equal zero. Any number that is not irrational is rational. A terminating decimal is a decimal that is going to end. It comes to an abrupt stop. It ends. A repeating decimal is a decimal with a pattern that's going to repeat over and over and over again. Use bar notation above the numbers that are repeating. Okay. If you look here, if we're talking about rational numbers, there are other sets of numbers that are considered rational numbers that we're going to talk about today, and that is integers. Integers are also rational numbers, and there's another kind of number we're going to talk about today, and that is a whole number. A whole number is considered an integer and a rational number. Alright, we're going to talk about converting rational numbers, fractions, into a decimal. If the number happens to be bit mixed, you're going to change it into an improper fraction first. After that, you're going to divide. If it's not a mixed number, the first thing you're going to do, you just skip the first step and just divide. So example number one. We are going to write negative two and one-fourths as a decimal. Okay, the first thing we need to do is change it into an improper fraction so that we can divide. To do that, you multiply and then you're going to add. Four times two is eight, and then eight plus one is nine. That is going to be over four. You always bring over your denominator. We are also bringing over our negative. Because this number is negative, you carry your negative over. It is the same number, so you keep the sign. Then you're going to divide. Now, if you notice here, every fraction has a bar. That bar means to divide. So automatically, you should know to change it into a decimal. You're going to just say 9 divided by 4. That's what that line is for. Okay? Whenever you divide, I always say that you put the top number in the little house. So if I make my little house, the 9 will be inside. The 4 will go on the outside. So now we're ready. 4 goes into 9 2 times. 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract and get 1. Now we have no more numbers to bring down, so we have to add a decimal 0. Decimal goes straight up, and you can go ahead and bring that 0 down. 4 goes into 10 2 times as well. 4 times 2 is 8. When we subtract, we get 2. Do not have a number to bring down, so we're going to add a 0, bring it down. 4 will go into 20 5 times. 4 times 5 is a 20, and we get a remainder of 0. So our answer is now, don't forget the negative, a negative 2.25. That is the decimal form of negative 2 and 1 fourths. The remainder is zero, so this is considered a terminating decimal. It ends. Okay, next example, we're going to write 5 over 11 as a decimal. We have no mixed numbers here, so we're just going to straight up and divide. The 5 will go inside the house because it is the top number. The 11 will go on the outside. 11 doesn't go into 5, so we need to go ahead and put a 0. 11 goes into 5 zero times, and we can go ahead and add our decimal 0. 11 goes into 50 four times. 11 times 4 is 44. When we subtract, we get 6. We need to add another 0, bring it down. 11 goes into 65 times. 11 times 5 is 55. When you subtract, you get 5. Add another 0, bring it down. 11 goes into 50 four times. 
11 times 4 is 44. Subtract, you get 6. Add another 0, bring it down. 11 goes into 60 five times. Get 55 and subtract and get 5. If you have already noticed, there is a pattern. You're going to get the same remainder. It repeats. So this is going to be a repeating decimal. So our answer is going to be 0 0.4545, 4545. And the way we can write that is to just write the numbers that repeat and put a bar over it. This is considered bar notation. So this is how we would write our answer. Example number three. We're going to write a negative 0 0.7. 0.7 as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. Okay? For numbers like this, whenever we're changing a decimal to a fraction, is really easy. All you have to do is write it as it is read. So just read the decimal, and I read it negative 0 0.7 on purpose um, so I could go so I can tell you the proper way to do it. And the proper way to say it is the way you would write it as a fraction. So this would actually be considered, saying it the correct way, negative 7 tenths. Because this is in the tenth spot. So I would write that as a negative 7 tenths. And that's your fraction. That's all there is to changing a decimal to a fraction. Let's do another one. Let's do a mixed number. We're going to write... 10.25 as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. The proper way to say this would be, we're going to write the number as it is read, 10 and 25 hundredths, because that is the hundredth spot. So you would write it, the 10, if it's before the decimal, that's our mixed number, 10 and 25 hundredths, just as it's read. Now here, we have to simplify. So, what we can do is we can divide by 25 on the top and the bottom. That would give us 10 and 1 fourths. That is the simplified way to write that decimal. Okay. Last example, we're going to order these from least to greatest. The best thing here to do would be to change the numbers into decimals because number one, they're easier to read. Number two, two of them are already decimal, so might as well change the fraction into a decimal. Okay, negative seven halves is negative 3.5. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and bring down the rest. Now they're all equal playing field, they're all decimals, so we are ready to order them from least to greatest. Now remember, you only got one positive number here, so of course that's going to be last. So looking at our negative numbers, we see that a negative 3 fifths is our lowest. Then you have a negative 2.8, and then 1 and 3 tenths. And that is our answer in order from least to greatest. There are no try these, so I need you to write a summary. See what, um, and tell me what you